Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. Uh, before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, we invite your Spirit's presence here as we open your word together. We just pray that you can be with each person who's searching for truth. Uh, those that aren't here yet, we just pray that you can bless them, that your Spirit can be around them. And we ask that your Holy Spirit can speak to our hearts this morning, that you can teach us and that we can learn of you the meekness and loneliness of Christ. We ask, Lord, that these things in the book of Daniel, in chapter 11, that we can apply them to our lives today, and that we can see clearly your purpose for us. And we thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning again. And uh, slowly, but slowly, we're um, going through Daniel chapter 11, um, we've started on verses 31 to 36. It's, it's pretty clear that these verses are addressing the 1260 years of the papacy, of the man of sin, who opposeth and exalteth himself above everything that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Right? Second Thessalonians chapter 2. We're working on the present truth application, so the historical application is pretty straightforward. And we've been looking at verse 33. They that understand among the people shall instruct many that they shall fall by the sword and by flame, by captivity and by spoil many days. And we connect that many days with the 1260 years. Uh, many is just an added word. Uh, it's days. So 1260 days is what we say that number is because we know that uh, the earth helps the woman and that's going to be uh, verse 34. Now, when they shall fall, they shall be holding with a little help, but many shall cleave to them with flatteries. We're going to address the flatteries maybe today. We'll see. And some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to purge and to make them white and even to the time of the end because it is yet for a time appointed. That refers to the three angels' messages from 1798 to 1844, the time of the end being 1798, the time appointed, the Moed, that's going to be October 22, 1844. And then it goes back in verse 36, saying, The king that shall do according to his will, he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. That indignation is the 1260 years. But that that is determined shall be done. And then it just goes on and describes him in a bit more detail. We're going to deal not today, probably with these verses. We'll look at these in more detail later on. But it's going to bring us to Daniel 11, verse 42, the time of the end. It says what's going to happen at the time of the end. King of the south shall push at him. That's France pushing against the king of the north, which is the papacy. And then 1989, the king of the north comes against him. That's the king of the south. So that history we're very familiar with. So we can see how this all flows in this historical application. That this is, uh, to me, it's very, very clear. I don't have any problems with how we've put this together over the last few months, where we still undecided about some things has to do with the historical application itself. Now, we've been using some of the symbols uh, that are found in the scriptures, some of them uh, in the words themselves, uh, the meanings of words and comparing scripture with scripture. Others is in the symbols of uh, the Hebrew numbers, and those symbols uh, have been pointing to in verse 33, to the ideas of the cross. So when we get to here, uh, and they that understand, so we take the understanding, the 7919, that number is the thousandth prime number. And so we're saying that it refers to the 144,000, not just because it's the thousandth prime number, but because the, the wise shall understand. And so the wise, in this case, in the, in the present truth application, would refer to the 144,000. At least them, maybe others as well. Um, then among the people, that is, historically, that's the Christians. In this history, this would be Seventh-day Adventists, those that are sealed among God's people. 
and and those shall instruct many. Now, when we took this instruct many, 995 and H7227, and we put them together, it, uh, we're saying that this is the message of July 18, 2020. And one of the ways that we look at that is we see that it's 8,222 days. So I just chart I made this morning. So you can see if we go from 9-11, it's going to bring us to, and was that where it was supposed to bring us to? To March 16th, 22 years. Yeah, so 22 years and 187 days. I'm just going to make sure I got that right. So it goes from 9-11 to March 16th, 2024. Oh, and that's what that was now. I remember. I was trying to remember what March 16th was. So March 16th, 2024 is a, a presentation I did on YouTube that is, it's actually out of all my videos that we've done over the last two years. Well, I guess it's now four years, the last four years since 2020. So we're into, uh, 2024. So it's video one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. So it's now got 602 views. It's the seventh in the list of, so it's the symbolic use of numbers, uh, number 10. And, uh, where we're dealing with Samuel Snow's letters and it's 602 views. So it's number seven on my list of the most views. So, I mean, the one that I got the most views is the March 28th, 2020 video, which has 1367. Uh, I can show you guys this so you can just see the list. So this is, so you can see there. This one in March, 28th of March, 2020. That was a, the first Zoom meeting that we did that I put on there. It's quite interesting. September 25th, 2023, uh, number 37. There's 980 views of that one. Uh, the Dark Day, which was done um, on May 29th, 2020. So that's a couple of months after that first one. That one has 709 views. Uh, Daniel's Last Vision number 85 is 683. Daniel's Last Vision number 2122 is 654. The Nashville 10th day, 10th month, December 25th, 2020 video of the bombing of Nashville that day that has 627. And then this one here, 602. So this March 16th, we're just saying that this is a symbol of instructing many. That's that's what I'm saying about it. It just that's it's not like we've instructed many people. 602 views, uh, but it symbolizes that as being uh, number seven on this list. Um, hopefully that makes sense to people. Okay, so so we got that March 16th, 2024. Now the interesting thing about it is it's 77 days after Jeff speaks for the first time. That's at 1260 days after July 18th, 2020. So the significance there is this contrast between these two groups, uh, the foolish and the wise, and this is the wise uh, are going to accept the symbolic use of numbers. Number 10 shows its universal or worldwide uh, proclamation. So that's the way that I look at it. The 77 days, of course, uh, is we, we connected to 77 weeks. So there are a number of things that uh, uh, we tie together with that. And going back to this here, I know this is a little bit of a review, but it definitely does help. Helps me anyway. Um, so we have, they shall instruct many. So that's the message of July 18, 2020. So obviously 8,222 days is going to be, 187 days and 22 years. So I guess, yeah, just if we go back to the diagram, I guess I should have finished that, right? So this period of time, 187 days and 22 years can be written 1, 8, 7, 20, 20. So you see it has all those digits. And, um, and so that's the proclamation of that message. And we can see that that comes from Samuel Snow's letters. 
the proclamation of time, how we ended up uh, getting uh, July 18, 2020 from Samuel Snow's letters, from Ezekiel's prophecy, and from Josiah Lich's prophecy. So all those things came together, confirmed by Samuel Snow's letters. So that's been rejected uh, by Jeff, December 30th, 2023, it's public rejection by voice. Um, and then 77 days later, March 16th, 2024 symbol. Right. And we, we tie that to this March 16th, 2019 date, which uh, is in footnote 33. And that was dealing with uh, the number of days. If we took the grieved, what was it? Can't see it now. I'm trying to find it in this here. Oh, I'm looking in the wrong place. Yeah. Uh, so he shall return. This is the one where he shall return. Uh, shall do, he shall even return. So, so shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the holy covenant. Um, let me see. Is that the one? No, it's the one here. He shall be grie grieved, return, and have indignation. That's the one. So those added together create that period of time. When we add 490, it's going to bring us to July 18, 2020. So, so that March 16th, 2019, I need to put in this chart. So I'll do it this way. So grieved, return, and have indignation. So that's going to be put in here. Uh, okay, sorry about that. And I need to put the words in here so people know. It's capitals. Okay, so that's going to be uh, put in here. Yes, I don't have that date here. So I'm just going to, I don't know how I put that. That's going to be a span of time. Maybe I'll put it like this. Just put it underneath there. And I can get rid of this part. I just need, so, I, so we got that there. Okay. So that's how we get the March 16th, 2019. So it's just connected to the March 16th, 2024. And then we have, so that was the footnote 33, we can get rid of that. So the next thing we have is this 6,501 days. Now that is, shall fall by the sword. So now we're really dealing with this progressive destruction of four. So the falling by the sword, and that brings us to June 30th, 2019. So that's going to be test presentation on the no Sunday law. So from 9-11, 6,501 days to June 30th, 2019. So that's going to precede those, those events dealing with, you know, the, the rebellion of Baal Peor and, and all those different things that happened September 7th, 2019, et cetera. So, so there's a lot of information in there, but we're just going to start that that is they shall fall by the sword. So that's going to be the first step. Now, um, the 3852, uh, what we did with that is we took, uh, so I'm going to put this over here, part of it anyway. So this is addressing this period of time here. So from 11.9 to 9.11 is 4,324 4, days. If we take and subtract this 3852, that is uh, the flame. It gives us 472, which represents April 27th, 31 AD. So it gives us a, a date, April 27th, and we would connect that to, to that. So I'm just going to put this under here. So what we have is a symbol of the cross with that one. Now the next one is... 7268. So that's going to be the captivity. Uh, 7268 days from 911 brings us to July 31st, 2022. Now we don't have any particular event for July 31st, 2022, except that as a symbol, July 31st represents the midst of the week. Uh, that is the seven week, the seven July represents the week of Christ and 31 represents 31 AD in the midst of the week. It's also uh, July 18 Julian, right? 
So in 2022, we had July 31st as the 10th day of the fifth month. So again, we just have a symbol relating to uh, the cross. And then we have 961. So that's going to be uh, by spoil. And 961 is uh, 31 squared. And so that's uh, the cross in the midst of the week, the seven times, or the, pardon me, the 62 weeks. So it's 31 weeks times two, 62 weeks, and the 62 weeks can be divided into 217, two periods of 17, 17 years, right, which gives us Raphia as a symbol, 217 BC. But it's, yeah, it's 31 weeks is 217. So we again have a reference to the cross. And then if we add all of these together, that they shall fall by the sword, by flame, by captivity, by spoil, many days. He gives us a period of time of 60 years and 144 days. Now I could count from my birthday, February 6, 1963, to June 30th, 2023. So whether that's significant or not, that's just the first meeting that we had here was on June 30th that evening. It was a study on uh, A.T. Jones, uh, General Conference Bulletins, and because uh, we moved that day. So we moved June 30th to this new place. So whether that's significant or not, I don't know. I just put it in there. But the idea of the 60 years and the 144 days, symboling the, symbolizing the 144,000, and when we look at this in the scriptures, so I just wanted to look at where the, the two places where they mention 60 in scripture is in Leviticus 27. The first one's in Leviticus 27, verse 3. The estimation shall be the male from 20 years old, even to 60 years old. Even thy estimation shall be 50 shekels of silver after the shekel of the sanctuary. So here it's going to talk about 60 years old. So the, there's only two places where they talk about 60 years. And, and in this case, 60 years old. That's Leviticus 27.3. So that's the symbol of the message to the Levites, March 27th, right? Uh, and the next place is uh, June 27th. That is Leviticus, Leviticus 27.7. So we know the seven... Uh, Jude, the 727, or 277, represents July 27th, which is uh, the symbol that comes from Josiah Lich's prophecy. And it just says, if it be from 60 years old and above, so that would be me, 61 now. But in this case, that number that we had gave us six, 60 years and 144 days. So this would apply here. Uh, then thy estimation shall be 15 shekels and for the female 10 shekels. So, so here we just have some, uh, shekels that's, that are being represented here. Maybe there's something we could do with these shekels, but that would be definitely another step. We can see these two symbols. The message to the Levites is connected to the message of July 18, 2020, the July 27 symbol. Okay. I don't know what people think about that one, but uh, to me, that seems to make a lot of sense, what we, we've been saying. So I wanted to add that in here. So to kiss 27 verse 3 and 27 verse 7. Okay, so that's going to refer to the 60 years probably wants punctuation in there or something. Okay, so hopefully that that's making sense. I don't know what people think about the idea of looking at um, just understanding in both these shekels to look at Leviticus 27 a bit more. Could I mean, one... What's please that? Include, include where, could you please include uh, where that quote is found? The world is stirred with the spirit of war. Is that 13MR or something? Because I didn't notice the reference in there. Well, it's in Nine Testimonies, page 14. Okay. 
that's not the original place. Yeah, it's in uh, Review and Herald, November 24th, 1904, right? The judgments of God, wars and rumors of wars, the destruction by fire and flood say clearly that the time of trouble, which is to increase until the end is very near at hand. We have no time to lose. The world is stirred with the spirit of war. The prophecies of the 11th of Daniel have almost reached their final fulfillment. From all the countries of the world, the Macedonian cry is sounding. Come over and help us. So there's there's probably um, some of these look slightly different. I just wonder what the original letter 103 1904. Thanks. And in that original letter, it says the prophecy in the 11th of Daniel has nearly reached its complete fulfillment, where the other one said its final fulfillment in uh, the Review and Herald. So you're going to see, um, you're right, and then they quote that, they shall be grieved, return, and have indignation against the Holy Covenant. So shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the Holy Covenant. Right, so verse 30, and then she quotes verses 31 to 36. So what we're saying, and it's good you brought that up, just as a reminder, that we, we understand that Emma White says, these verses, which we see the historic fulfillment, she says they are going to be repeated as one. She talks about them, that a scene similar to this will, will occur, but also that there, that it has it in her day come to its complete fulfillment. So first, we know that we're in the midst of the fulfillment of the historical application of these prophecies, right? especially in Ellen White's day. We hadn't had uh, the repeat of history yet. We hadn't got to uh, 1989 yet. She died before 1989. And um, and yet also all of those things that have happened in those prophecies are being repeated in that end time, right? So in the history in which we're living, these things are being repeated. And so we have a present truth application. Now we have a present truth application specifically within this movement. So when we're doing this present truth application, one of the things that we find is that first, if we look at the historical application, it leads us up to here. It doesn't, it's not like we had some prophecy that was fulfilled way in the past, and now we're just reapplying the prophecy to the present day. We're actually saying that Daniel chapter 11 addresses 1798. It addresses 1989. It addresses the Sunday law. It addresses the close of probation, all of those histories, right? Daniel chapter uh, 12, verse 1, Michael stands up. It's all included in there. In a sense, we wouldn't need the present truth application to understand the prophecies of Daniel 10, 11, and 12. It's going to bring us to our time. But within that prophecy itself, it's telling us that there is a, a repetition of history, that the, what's happening at the end is connected with what's happening in the historical application at the beginning. So it's built right into the prophecy. So when we do something like take, you know, Daniel 11, and we start looking at verse 1, and we start applying these things to the time of the end in not just... 539 BC, but we apply it to 1989. We're following what's actually in Daniel chapter 11 itself. It's telling us that the things that occurred in the past are being repeated. That is, they're iterated, right? There's this iteration of these events that they are typical. And one of the things we see in Daniel chapter 11 that I had never seen clearly before was the connection to the 2300 days and the 70 weeks and the 2520. So the 2300 days and the 70 weeks are understood by Daniel when the angel Gabriel comes to him in ch chapter 10. And, and what he's mainly trying to uh, give to him is an understanding of what happens in Millerite history at the end of the 2520s and its repetition in our history. And that these are connected to the 70 weeks as a symbol, the cross, the week of Christ, 
all of those symbols that we use in um, arriving at our understanding of chronology and how we made these applications that related to time within the movement. So all of those things are connected. And the center of this is the cross. So when we see these symbols here of the cross applying to our present truth application, we can see that God has done this specifically for us to understand that this is about us taking up our cross, that this is not some peace and safety message. This is a message that uh, is a difficult message because it requires uh, a transformation of character. So thanks for pointing me to that, to just remind me about that and to remind other people as we go through these studies. Okay, so we have all of these symbols in here, but we can see that the persecution that happened in the past, in the 1260 years, that we can relate this to our time so exactly where we would put this 60 years and 144 days as a symbol, I don't know. I just, you know, I put it at my birthday and it brings me to June 30th, 2023. But I don't know if that's actually the correct place. So it's just where it was placed. And that I should put the number of days that that adds up to. Because I believe it's uh, 22,059 days. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. 22,059 days. In 22,059 days, if you divide it by 365.25, it gives you 22, 60 years, pardon me, by 60, and multiply that, and it's going to give 144. Yeah, so 144 days. 60, 60 years and 144 days. So, I, you know, I don't know if that's where it would be best be placed. I know I tried different spots. You know, if I count back from April 5th, 2030, it brings me to November 12th, 1969, which doesn't mean anything to me. Maybe there's something about November 12th, 1969 as a symbol. It's the first spacewalk of Apollo 12, but I don't know if that's very significant. I mean, I saw it, but <laughs> doesn't mean anything. Okay, so don't know where that what where that symbol was but we have the 60 years relating to leviticus 27 verse 3 message to the levites and 27 verse 7 which is about july 18 2020 and and of course 9 11 and um and of course the 144 days representing the 144,000. so any thoughts on any of that Okay, so the next step is, now when they shall fall, they shall be hoping with a little help. Now, we, of course, address this as the 1260, uh, but many shall cleave to them with flatteries. And some of them of understanding, that is, the wise, shall fall to try them, to purge them, to make them white. So we have the three angels' messages, 1798 to 1844, even at the time of the end, because it is yet for an appointed time. So, so that's pretty clear. I'm, oh, you're not looking what I'm looking at. Click the wrong thing there. Okay. So when we look at this in the historic application, and I'm just going to do this for now, just so we can see it all here. So this is going to be verse 34 and 35. So when they shall fall, they shall be holpen with a little help. So we know this is the 1260 years when the earth helps the woman. So how do we apply this to our history? Where does this fit in? So it's during this time of persecution, and, and we haven't really fully defined exactly how we place it. We just have these symbols. We say it's it's 9-11, right? 9-11 in the history of 9-11, that this persecution happened. So uh, this help, I tried looking at some of these numbers, and I, I didn't get anywhere so far. I mean, if we take 5, 8, uh, 2, 6, that's Holden, the number itself 
If we divide it by two, it gives us the digits 2913, which are all the digits of 391 and a half. It, it could just refer to a message uh, that, you know, symbolically representing this message in different different ways. So half of it is 2913. The octal is 13302. Aran, what would 13302 symbolize? I'm not sure. What about all, what about the number of verses in the Bible? It's it's the same digits, different order, different amount, but because that's three one one zero two, so one three three zero two might represent that. Yeah, it's the same, not the exact same digits, but it's the same set of digits. Yeah, same set of digits, and and just kind of reversed a little bit instead of one three three zero two. It's three one one zero two is the number of verses. So maybe. Maybe there's just lots of different symbols that can be shown that, that, that the help that comes here has to do with the messages of God's word. So when we're tried, when when they shall fall, so some people are going to fall, and, and this can refer to persecution or to it just means to totter or waver, right? Uh, that there's some help that comes. And, and we know the earth helps the woman uh, in Revelation 12, 16, during the 1260 years. And so we're saying that here, the thing that helps is the messages in God's word. Okay, so, I mean, that that's definitely a possibility of how we could understand some of these symbols. So when we go 5, 8, uh, 2, 8, it's going to be slightly different. It's one, uh, it's two digits different. So one number different. So when I look up that number, 5828, I don't see anything particular about that number by itself. I mean, it is, uh, it's, I think it's 31 times 188. So it gives us uh, a symbol. Okay, that's interesting. A major event on November 12, 1969 was dissident author Alexander Solzhenitsyn's. Isn't it Sol? Is that how you spell his name? Anyway, I, I can't pronounce it. Uh, being expelled from the Soviet Writers Union. I would connect that to the King of the South's persecution of those who are doing righteousness, whether or not they are Christians. Solzhenitsyn. I can't say his name. Solzhenitsyn. Anyway, uh, he was a guy who spent a lot of time in gulags. So anyway, this number 5828 is if you take it and divide it by 31, which is the symbol for the cross, the year of the cross, you get 188. So it's not 1888, but it's uh, a message. It would symbolize 1888, the message of righteousness by faith. So that would be another thing that's part of our message. So we got, uh, so far we have uh, God's word. We have 391 and a half, and we have message of righteousness by faith and the cross being symbolized here in these words holpen and help now if we add uh, a little help we get the number 10420 the octal is 24264 so the symbol there of the 26th day of the fourth month but you know that might be a bit obscure just because of it's not really clear and then if we add again, help him with a little help. So we add the 5826 to that. We get 16,246, which is a period of 44 years and 175 days. So I don't know where that would go, if that means anything. So not all of these numbers have to you know, fit into something. But if we're going to say that that when they shall fall, when they totter, when they waver, they shall be helped with a little help. And we compare that to the 1260 years. What is it about the earth helping the woman? I mean, obviously, they, they flee to the wilderness. They go to the United States as well. But we can see that there's this religious freedom, the freedom to study God's word. Right. So how would we sit? How would, what would that symbol be if we were to put it in a present truth application today? I mean, we can say, like, what is the earth really representing? 
but to go into the wilderness is a type of exile of some sort. Is it a help that we have been pushed out of the movement? Is that the earth helping the women? The woman? Yeah, that's what came to me too. We're like the off scouring now because we continue to pursue these messages on chronology, which the others have rejected. Well, right. yeah. So, um, so how would we characterize that? Um, well, we could just simply say exile from the movement. And, and that helps because instead of being caught up in the politics and all of those things, it drives us further to study God's word, right? To depend upon God. So persecution is a good thing. It's not something, you know, and I never complain about it. Like, I, it's not like this is such a terrible thing that uh, from my perspective, of how I feel personally, it's sad because it affects other people. That's the thing that bothers me that, that when people spread gossip and rumors and they, uh, misrepresent what's being said by others, that there are people who believe it, and maybe they shouldn't, but they do, and uh, it prejudices the, against them from studying um, and looking into these things. And so, so there's a lot of casualties that occur. So that's the bad part. But from a personal point of view, it, it definitely drives me uh, to study more diligently and to work harder at, at the things that God has given us to do. So obviously, you know, if, if we were a part of the movement and Jeff was doing meetings every day, you know, ever since July 18th, I mean, I think we'd be in a lot better shape, you know, if we didn't have all these problems. Uh, but definitely we, we would not have gone through the experience that we have and we wouldn't have come to understand things with as much detail as we have. So so exile from the movement leads to a deeper understanding of God's word. Good understanding. Now, when many shall cleave to them with flatteries, we know that this flatteries idea has shown up already, right? So um, where was it? Uh, yeah. So as, and such as do wickedly against the covenant, Shall he, the papacy, the spiritual king of the north, corrupt by flatteries? So flatteries have to do with the prospects of position and material gain and other things like just even social. And I guess the position would be social status within the movement. So flatteries obviously is not a good thing. And so even though the earth helps the woman, we have this exile going on. Uh, but many shall cleave to them with flatteries. Now, the idea of cleave, so let's look at this here so we can see what, this is verse 34. So the word cleave uh, means properly to twine, that is by implication to unite, to remain, also to borrow as a form of obligation or causatively to lend, abide by, with cleave, join to self, a lender. So, so this is a, this type of cleaving obviously is not a good thing, right? So even though we have this, this opportunity to study God's word, we can see that there are some that end up cleaving uh, to them with flatteries. Now, when it says to them, uh, I don't think it's referring to those that are helped with a little help. So they're going to cleave to a group of people, some group. And, and we would probably have to go, such as do wickedly against the covenant shall, cor shall he corrupt by flatteries. I would say that the ones that they, that cleave to them, the them is the ones that have been corrupted by flatteries themselves. So obviously they're not going to be cleaving to the ones that are helped with a little help, right? So it has to be referring to something earlier. So they're going to cleave to them with flatteries. Now, uh, the word here, uh, to, um, is this one of these prepositions, above, over, upon, or against. So it has lots of different meanings. But in the case, case of the fact that we have cleave with flatteries, this would be cleaving to them. So the King James would be correct there. 
And then flatteries themselves uh, mean something very smooth. That is a treacherous spot, figuratively blandishment, flattery, or slipperiness. And it's kind of an interesting word, kalalaka. So just the sound of the word kalalaka, flatteries. So kalalaka, hmm, it comes from 2505. Come on. So, so what we have is this, um, these flatteries that, uh, so this definitely shows the contrast between the two groups. Now, of course, historically, we know this is applying to the period of the 1260 years, and we see that happening in that period of time. And some of them of understanding shall fall to try them, to purge them, to make them white. We know that's the testing of the Protestants, even at the time of the end, because it is yet for a time appointed. So that's that period. So now we would have to say, well, we have a 1260, and then we have three angels' messages that follow. So if I was going to normally do this, so it could be that when we deal with uh, they shall be helping with a little help, that we could make an application prior to 1989. That is, we can take uh, these this progressive destruction of four, this persecution, not just within the movement, we, we could make an application that this is referring to uh, something within Seventh-day Adventism itself um, that is happening in the four generations of Adventism. And that's how we initially looked at it. And, and maybe both can apply. Maybe we can apply it to the, to the period of, of the four generations of Adventism. And, and I, I don't have a problem with that. And we can see that it also applies uh, to the movement itself. So when we, we go back here, we changed it from the four generations of Adventism to progressive destruction of four in this movement. Uh, I'm going to share the screen properly. <clears throat> right. So we had originally the four generations of Adventism here, but we now applied it to this movement. But I think both are applicable. I think we can accept that it's going to be uh, applying to Adventism, not just to this movement. But we can see how a lot of the symbols here apply to us. So if we're going to take this, this step, this three steps, we can just say, well, this would relate to November 9th, 2019, July 18, 2020, and December 25th, 2021. That these are the things that are to purge us to try us, to make us white. So these would be the messages of the 777 structure. So the messages of the 77 days in the present truth application. Okay, so that is, that's the three angels' messages, so to speak, and, and we've seen lines with that in. So these messages, understanding November 9th, 2019, understanding July 18, 2020, and understanding uh, December 25th, 2021, that's what it would be talking about. So the time of the end here, you know, we could say it's 1989, you know, we could, but I think this here represents to 11, 9, 19. That ends up being the time of the end in that line, right? So we're just saying it's that 777 seven, seven days because it is yet for a time appointed. Now, we could just say the time appointed is December 25th, 2021. Could say that, um, whether, cause that's the Sunday law symbol, right? Which is October 22nd, 1844 in that context. Okay. So, so we could just say that that is the message that was given. So in this time, we have, we have the separation that happens, so this exile that happens. And so it's not necessarily following um, that exile that we have to have these three messages. Those three messages are the same messages. To understand our message is what's going to uh, refine us. So these messages are still present truth. Even though these dates have passed, we're not predicting anything with them. We're not, we, we still accept those messages. Okay. I think that makes sense. If people think it doesn't, just let me know. 
obviously we could uh, we could apply it on a broader broader spectrum we you know we could go back to you know september 11th and and put that as but we're but that would be in the big a bigger context so we're we're bringing it right down to uh, the movement now so when we get to verse uh, 36 and now it's going to talk about the king of the north shall do according to his will we know that this is uh, going to refer to the Sunday law. Now we know him doing according to his will has to be the Sunday law. So all of this is referring historically to the papacy during the 1260 years. So that's clear. But if we're going to apply this in our time in the resurrection of the man of sin through the image of the beast made by the United States, this would just simply be a description of the Sunday law. Can we agree with that when he does according to his will? So I would say here, you know, Papal Rome, the king of the north, in our time, this is going to refer to papacy in the image of the beast by the USA. Right, so that's who existing now. It's the papacy through the image of the beast, or the image to the beast, by the United States. So this is bringing us to, and you can see how, um, you know, as we had looked through the earlier part dealing with the 1260 years of the woman, the earth helping the woman, right, in Revelation chapter 12. And you can see how we're moving to Revelation 13, so that, you know, the Daniel is lining up with what we see in Revelation. So in Revelation 13, now we have uh, the papacy and then and then the United States. So the United States making an image to the beast. So all of this is describing the man of sin and the Sunday law. And this is just more referring to the Sunday law crisis. Now it says, he sh and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. Now, of course, this indignation here, the reason why it's called the indignation is this is God's judgment. The indignation is not, it, it's God using the, the kingdoms of the world to persecute God's people, right? Can we agree with there? The indignation is God's indignation, not the papacy's indignation or paganism's indignation. Right. So these are periods of time that God has given to allow this persecution to occur. So the accomplishment of the indignation here, this must refer to. So you can see that this is obviously becoming a little broader than what we have here. But when it's accomplished, this is going to be the close of probation. So 1798 isn't lining up with 1989. It's lining up with the close of human probation because we're in the time of the Sunday law here. Now, the 1335, we know that there's this between the 1290 and the 1335, there's a period of 45 years, 16,864 days. Just thinking so there must be something that we could. OK, I don't know. Any ideas what we can about this uh, period of time? So I'm just looking here at this 45 years between 12, the 1290 and the 1335. Now, technically, if you count the number of days from 1798 to 1844, it's going to be more than 46 years. But it's it's you know it's 46 years minus. 46 years and 62 and a half days. 62 divided by half is divided into half is 31. For that that is determined shall be done. So uh, I guess the question is, what do the 45 years represent in a present truth application? That's sort of a question. Isn't that bringing us to a preparation time? Okay. So... So when, when is the 45 years? What is the 45 years symbolizing in our history? Like period of time. 
what if July 18th, 2020 is the end of our 1335? Okay. Um, explain how. We know in the Millerite history, the 1290 ended in 1798. We know that if we take that same period from 508, we come to 1843. Yeah. What was the relevant date being used in 1843 for the Millerites? Well, well, that would be April 19th or April 18th. So how many days are there between the Pope being taken captive in 1798 and April 18th of 1843? Yeah, so that's going to be 16,864. Does that have any relevance for us? Not that I know of. That would be an inclusive count if I did it as an ordinal count or a cardinal count. I mean, 16,863, 219 times 77. Uh, I don't know of anything significant regarding it. I mean, it's obviously... Um, you know, it's 46 years and whatever many days I said it was, 62 and a half days. So I don't know. I don't have any, I don't have any significance there. I don't like with the symbols of the numbers. Now it says that which is determined uh, shall be done. So we have some Hebrew numbers that we could use. Rather than just the 45, so the 2782 plus 6213, 8995, 24 years, 29 days. I'm looking at Genesis 14 about the four kings versus the five kings. Okay. I'm wondering if it has anything to do with the ensign. Uh, there's going to be a battle among these kings and then the righteous. There was a righteous cause being fought for because a righteous man was involved with it. So I don't know. That just came into my mind. The four and okay. versus the five. Also because April fifth, thirty. Yeah. Okay. So so April fifth, twenty thirty. Maybe that might have something to do with it. Let me just deal with these numbers separate. And need I repeat the fixation with President Trump? The 45. Okay. Yeah. Well, it could, it, I could just represent dealing, dealing with, yeah, the, because the 45th president is still part of our history. And so maybe when the issue of Trump is done, maybe that that's what it's referring to. Does that make sense? Because that, that de determined, we're saying is, the 45 years between the 1290 and the 1335. That's the part that's cut out of that uh, structure. We dealt with 6213 before. So with the 6213, I'm trying to remember where we put that. I don't remember. I'll have to look that up. Okay, so um, so if we're going to take this, this is the period of time. You can say that it addresses uh, the Trump this is a period of time dealing with the Trump prophecy. Let us put that there. It's footnote number 45 beside it there, too. Um, at least at the present time. Uh, the sh 6213. I, gotta, I know we had some place here where we dealt with this. Okay, I didn't write this case. Um, at least I thought we dealt with it. It's this do. So I guess we didn't deal with it as a span of time. I looked at it before. I don't think I found it's because it's 17 years and uh, four days. So 17 years and four days. And I think I tried placing that somewhere, but I don't know where, how we would deal with that. Um, maybe something to do with Trump, but I don't know where we would put these 17 years and four days. Well, the thing I can say about it is, uh, okay, so with Trump, um, so he becomes president in 2016, right? November 9th. So that would bring us way into the future. So that's not going to work. If we go from um, this Mayan calendar date, it's kind of interesting. 
So with the Mayan calendar, if we go to the 13, 13, 13, 0, 0, 0, 0, and you go two, two, six, two, one, three days. Oh, that didn't work. Look what I did there. Brings us to December 25th, 2029. So that's way into the future. I don't know what it would mean. So anyway, we're going to leave it there for now. We'll come back to this tomorrow. Maybe I'll have some time to think about it. So one of the things is we know we start with this 508, right? The um, December 25th, 508 to start uh, the 1290 and the 1335. So, so maybe there's something to do with that. Okay. Any final thoughts before we close with prayer? Okay, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study this morning. I pray that you can bless each person. May your angels watch over each one of us. Help us in all that we do today to glorify you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.